I can sit here and rant and rave that and say, you know, Muslims shouldn't drink alcohol, they shouldn't sell drugs, and they shouldn't do zina, and they shouldn't go on Tinder, and they shouldn't, you know, na'uz billah, go out raving it and shaving it on the weekends. But the reality is, every Muslim knows that. I mean, I was speaking to a Muslim brother, subhanAllah, this is ajeeb, right? I was going to a madrasa just the other day, this is Thursday, and I know one brother in my local area, he's a bit of a, he's a roadman, so he, he pulls over the car, he sees me, and he pulls it, he goes, Sheikh, mashallah, and he goes, I was listening to a lecture of yours yesterday, and come and hug me, mashallah, and he was like, grip, gripsing me up in the middle of the road. And anyway, what happened was, is, uh, may Allah Ta'ala guide him all, and may Allah, grant goodness, uh, may Allah Ta'ala grant goodness to us all, but he pulled over on the side, and subhanAllah, two guys, it, what it seemed got into the car, they were there for about 30 seconds and then they departed their company. If it was the case of saying hello and goodbye, you could have did that or done that standing outside the car. You get it? So what they were doing, only Allah knows best. We have husn of dhan, meaning we've got a good thought about the brother, but reality is only Allah knows best, okay? Point I'm mentioning is this, is that even a person who does wrong, he knows he's doing wrong, but he still knows in the bottom of his heart that what he's doing is bad. I mean, I know one brother, subhanAllah, he goes that I go raving every single weekend, but when I come home at night, I make sure I read the Galma before I go to sleep, just in case I die. <laughs> Do you imagine that? I mean, just imagine, subhanAllah, that we've got people like this in our community, they know it's not right. So there's no point in me sitting here ranting and raving, saying alcohol, drugs, and zina. We all know as a community. One of the things which I am therefore passionate about is that because we've cut off from our legacy of the past, we don't realize what Muslims have done historically. And I think that is one of the things that can push people into the right direction is because when you have a sense of gharat and you have a sense of belonging as to what you could have achieved and what you've lost by not being a Muslim, then that I think has a more of a profound effect. And that's my simple understanding. Now there's no doubt that Muslims from the times of Banu Abbas, where Muslims had the, you know, Bayt, the, Bayt al Hikmah, Muslims had the universities in Spain, in Ghanata, in Al Hamra, and so on, that Muslims were at the forefront of technological, educational, and every advance there was. And in a time where the free flow of information wasn't existent, why? Is because if you were learning, say, for example, if a, if a discovery was found, I don't know, somewhere like China, it remained in China. But the beauty of Islam was that if something was found in Spain and something was found in Samarqand, which is the two far sites of the Islamic Empire, because people would come annually for the Hajj, they would bring with them their new inventions as well. So the ghard was to be to make hajj, uh, the, the hajj for the sake of Allah. But they would bring along their inventions and they would exchange ideas. So an idea from the south of Spain would reach Samarqand within just a year. Do you get? Do you understand where I'm coming from? So whenever there's a dini element with our with our worldly side, there'll always be some benefit. And I don't need to give you guys a history lesson, but Muslims throughout the ages have always contributed to great things. Whether it be medicine, whether it be engineering, whether it be sciences, read your history and understand. Don't cut yourself off. Read for God's sake. Pick up a book and read. Do you know what I'm saying? You have to connect and understand where Muslims have left off. Where, what have we, what have we abandoned? Allahu Akbar. And this is why I, my one tear I shed is in regards to this, is that Muslims have so much potential that they can give back. Do you get it? Because Allah has given us capabilities, salahiyah, sifat and qualities. We're not saying everyone's void of those, but I'm saying when a Muslim goes in with this thinking that I'm doing this for the sake of advancing the ummah, he's also doing that as a deen, you know, a faridah, a fard kifaya. And as a responsibility in terms of his faith, you will persevere, you will go against the tide, you will strive, you will grind, because in your mind, you're thinking, this is beneficial for my deen as well as my akhirah. I don't know if you guys understand where I'm coming from. I may sound a bit philosophical, but in simple language is this. If you haven't understood your history and where Muslims have come from, it's easy for you to be mentally taken over by someone else, because you don't know your history.